Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be asking ourselves the question, are these eyeshadow palettes dupes or not? And in case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Estes and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And in today's video, we're gonna be comparing and contrasting not three, not four, but five murky, grungy color stories that I have labeled as being some of my favorites for fall. But I feel these all have something similarly going on, so we're going to see can these like dupe the vibes and would you need all of these or can you make do with getting just the one? So that's what we're going to be exploring in today's video. And it may be good to know before we get into things that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup references. And because I have been buying, trying and reviewing makeup for the past decade, longer than a decade, I should say, um, I kind of really know what I like. So if I say something is a favorite, it's a solid favorite and you know where that's coming from. So yeah, if you would like to join the Snow Angel family that I've got going on here, then definitely click subscribe down below. Let's get started with the video. So which are the five palettes I will be featuring today? We're gonna to be talking about Unearthly's Fairy Frolic. They're now, they used to be called Alien Cosmetics and that's when I bought it. Mine still has round pans instead of the square pans they do now. Fantasy Cosmetica, The Druid, It's Freaking Bats, Shroud Cosmetics and Betty Bean, and Subculture from ABH, and the Glaminatrix Nocturnal Palette. And in case you were wondering what this eyeshadow look is that I've got going on, I had to make sure I tried this palette out before I could sit down to film this video. So I made sure in the past few days that I was able to do the looks I wanted to do with this video with this palette and this is what I came up with for the final one. So now that I've tried all of these, I can let you know how I feel about them real quickly and then we'll get to the floor and tell you, like do all the comparison swatches. So let's talk about these palette first. So the entire video idea came together because of this, the subculture by ABH. It's discontinued and it's a very controversial palette because when this was released, we were not used to having press pigments in shadows. And now nowadays, press pigments are everywhere. Um, this palette was just, it got a lot of flack. <laughs> I should say that um, because this is just, it's not the easiest formula to work with. If you're a beginner in makeup, this is terrible. People were hitting pan on this super easy because of how soft it is. If you do have this and you have been unable to make it work, just dip. Don't swirl your brush around in the pan. All you need to do is dip and you'll have enough, more than enough, especially with these deeper shades. I've only just recently used this also uh, in combination with some multi-chromes. So if you wanna see me use this palette and see looks that I did with it, you can go to that video. I'll make sure to link it down below because I'm pretty sure that it's already up by the time I post this video. Uh, so then you can see it a bit more in action. But yeah, I love the mattes we get in here. I tend to discredit the just three shimmers we get, but these really nice murky fall toned mattes I live for. Like this is my kind of fall color story. But because of that difficult formula, I think that that's why a lot of people actually go like, is it that perfect? There were a lot of dupes around when that palette had just been released. I had one from Makeup Revolution way back in the day. I think they still sell it. But then this was actually the first one of these indie palettes that I've tried. The Fairy Frolic from Unearthly looks like this. And do you just see how like these five mattes, well, this is more of a shimmer, but these like five shades in the middle are very much that grungy matte kind of vibe that the subculture also has. I think we get some different undertones in here and we don't get as many options as this is only nine shades, but this does have one, two, three, four different shimmers and the Alien Cosmetics slash Unearthly Cosmetics shimmers are actually pretty nice. So that's the reason why I wanted to rope this one in. And then over the summertime, I got myself the Fantasy Cosmetica Druid palette. And here again, we get that sort of like grungy matte and in here we get five shimmers instead of four. Uh, we get five shimmers and here we also get some multi-chrome, duochrome kind of things, which, you know, the ABH shimmers also have a bit of a flip, like the lighter two definitely do. 
Um, but I feel that, for instance, in here we also get this like like amber, sort of coppery kind of shade that the ABH also has. So that's why this also, in my brain, kind of dupes the vibes. And then another palette I bought over the summertime, but it took a while to get here, is this Nocturnal palette that I'm wearing today. And that has some of the grunge, like that chartreuse shade, this really nice purpley shade, but especially also in these browns and mustards over here. But then it has some brightness with the teals and like the periwinkle, which seemed odd, but, oh, and this is by the way, a pretty even split between mattes and shimmers, which I also prefer. Uh, but that made me realize that I also had to make sure to rope in the It's Freaking Bats, because this has that periwinkle, but then it also has those grungy like plums and like tealy mustardy, mustardy shades. And then we have five shimmers. So I felt that these all sort of, well, they don't serve the same purpose, but I just wanted to see how, so for instance, some of those plums compare and the teals compare. And I think we can sort of make it work. My prediction is that the ABH is the one with the warmest undertone, but that's my prediction. Um, and with the It's Freaking Bats, it perhaps may be good to know that if I do find that this works really well with some of the other palettes, I'm going to get so many more options because I have always said how I struggle making looks with just this palette by itself. I feel I need other shades to make it play well together because for instance, these two shades don't work. They just don't work on my skin tone. Like the shades that you expect might work together from looking at them in the pan just didn't really translate very well together on my skin tone. So that's why I've always felt that I need other things to go with this. So now that we've had a look at these palettes one by one, let me take you down to the floor and then we're gonna do some swatches. All right, so welcome to the floor. I've got all the palettes laid out, so let me unwrap these so we can have a look at the color stories. So now that we have all the color stories laid out, I can already see a few shades that I'd like to compare because all of the palettes seem to have this like plummy kind of shade. So that's, I think, where I want to start. But I think we can also see that, for instance, a shade as warm as this isn't going on in any of these. And all of these seem to have this like chartreuse kind of shade, which this doesn't have. But this, for instance, does have this yellow. So, and this also has that yellow. But in here we get this vibrant green. We, we get some green shimmers in here as well. So I'm, I'm thinking at least the plums, the chartreuse shades, and then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll also swatch some shimmers just for the fun of it, because especially in these indie palettes, we, we've got some interesting shades going on, let me tell you. So we're going to start with the plumminess, though. So this is what the ABH looks like. We have Unearthly, <clears throat> Fantasy, it's freaking bats. Ooh, can you just see that those in undertones are all very different? And then we'll just put this one on the thumb. So these are all five shades. So I think you can see that they're all very different undertones. So let me just put them on my wrist here because I think it's else going to be a mess. So you can see that the ABH is nearly black. Ooh, the Unearthly and the Fantasy Cosmetica are pretty much identical. But then the It's Freaking Bats is very close to the ABH. So there we have the five shades. So you can see that the ABH and the uh, Shroud is very similar. Those are pretty much dupes. I'm pretty sure if you were to put them on the eyes, identical. These are like very warm tone plummy shades. So these two, even though they look nothing alike in the pan, do you just see that? Because it's this shade and this shade that I swatched. Very different. And then this is the most purpley of them all. Um, this one is the one with the least amount of black running through it, and it's not overly warm, this one from the Nocturnal. So yeah, I definitely think that in terms of what these palettes do, there may definitely be an overlap here. Hold on. So let's do the chartreuse shades next. Um, so this one, maybe these two, uh, these two, and then this as well. I think that's nice. We don't have any chartreuse in the in the ABH, so that's a bit futile perhaps, but so this shade, this, this, and this. 
So there we have the chartreuse shade. So we have the unearthly. These two are from the druid right here. Then the next two are from the it's freaking bats. And then this chartreuse is right here. So I feel that the one from the Glaminatrix is perhaps the most yellow leaning shade. The ones from the it's freaking bats are the matte is a bit more like really that true yellow green in terms of a chartreuse matte. I think this is the prettiest one. But I feel that the shimmer is too golden toned to really go with it. That's always been my gripe with these shroud like shades that seem to go together. Is that the uh, matte and the shimmer have a different undertone. So I feel this is more green tone, more cool tone leaning. Whereas this is a lot warmer and they don't really go together perfectly. In the Druid palette, I feel it's the other way around. We get a more warm toned leaning matte. It's got quite a lot of brown. But then the shimmer is quite, quite vibrant, so I'm now looking at this and I'm like, maybe I should pair these two together in a look sometime, you know? Because I think that might work. And then this one uh, from Unearthly is uh, definitely pretty, but it's more golden toned as well. So it's got a bit more yellow running through it. Now next up, I think I need to do something with these greens. And I think the type of greens we get in almost all of these palettes go more with this then it does with this khaki. I know that in the US you say khaki, but it's a loan word from Hindi. It's khaki. In Hindi, I don't think anyone would say khaki. I don't know. I, I looked it up. I, it's a khaki green for me. I can't. I know I speak with an American English accent, but sometimes I just choose more international variations because if I were to say this in my classroom my students would just laugh at me or they wouldn't even understand what I'm saying. So yeah, cocky green because that's more universally understandable. All right, so <laughs> linguistic rant over. We're gonna go into these two I think because I think for instance that this, this and this may be similar-ish but then for instance these two and I do want to swatch this teal shimmer and this teal shimmer and also this teal but i already feel from looking at everything we've got going on that this is far more blue toned than anything else so i'm gonna try and swatch the things that feel like they go together to swatch those next to each other so this 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 and this and then the shimmer separately because we have a nice teal shimmer down here too so let's do this, this, and this. Oh, very different. So here's the ABH. So those are the mattes, and this is the ABH one, which I feel is the truest teal out of all of them. This is that shade from the Unearthly, which is far more green toned. It's more forest, grassy green leaning. Then this is the one from the It's Freaking Bats, which is just far more blue toned. And then we get these two. Oh, let me swatch this one then as well, uh, if we're doing the mattes first anyways. And then we have um, this like darker mid-tone green from the ABH and then the, the Druid. And you can see that they have a similar grayish green undertone for sure. I feel those are quite similar and then the Nocturnal is just very blue compared to everything else. Teal is a mix of green and blue. And you can have green toned leaning teals and you can have blue toned leaning teals. But I believe officially teal fall under the blue category, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we've done the greens, teals, the plums, the chartreuse shades. Maybe we should do some... Oh, I was going to do the shimmers as well. Never mind that. So I think I'm going to take this green shimmer as well. This shimmer. This shimmer. This shimmer. And then also the other shimmer. So this is the unearthly. Druid, It's Freaking Bats, and then the Nocturnal. This is like one of those blurpily kind of shades, which it's more of a purple perhaps, not sure. And then just for good measure, to show you that the shimmers from the ABH really don't compare <laughs> to any of these indie sync shimmers. So this is Unearthly, the Druid, we have the It's Freaking Bats, the Nocturnal, and then this is from the ABH. So, I mean, 
In terms of shine, the Indie palettes win by a mile. And you can again see that this is far more blue toned. And then next up, we're going to swatch these mattes. And I think those can actually be quite similar-ish. Ooh. So you can just see that the Shroud Cosmetics and the Nocturnal ones are quite similar. I feel the Shroud one is perhaps a bit more vibrant. And I feel that what none of these palettes do is give you like lighter shimmer options here in the Shroud. So let me swatch these two for you because these are really pretty. And these I feel do go really well. But that's why I feel the It's Freaking Bats is a bit of an outlier here because we get these more vibrant uh, shimmers that none of these have because everything is quite grungy. Okay, so apologies if the image has shifted, but I had to change my battery real quickly <laughs> um, because I did, of course, there are still other things we can still compare. Um, I really think we need to do something with this plummy shade, for instance, maybe something with these like mustardy shades because we've got a couple of those things going on as well. And maybe that brown. So let me do the plums first because I think in terms of plumminess, we get this, and maybe this brown. Oh, that's very brown. So this is the ABH, unearthly, ooh. That is very pink compared to that. And then that's the brown from the Druid, but that seems like it looks quite plummy in the pan, but then it doesn't seem to have that at all. So yeah, that's those three shades. And now I'm also thinking, because I, there's, there's nothing really brown in any of these, so now I'm wondering if this brown, fudge, is anything like the Druid? Oh, this seems to be a bit more yellow toned from the ABH. Yeah, you can see that this has a clear reddish undertone and this is a bit more yellow. But that means we can also swatch this brown right here on the end from the Nocturnal with these, but that's very yellow toned <laughs> compared to that. <laughs> Oh well, let's let's just keep going then and go in with these guys and then maybe this orange for good measure as well. So, here we have the other one from the unearth uh, from the nocturnal. Here we have ABH noct uh, unearthly and this is also ABH. So you can see that these two are pretty much the same. This one looks a bit weird we weak from the nocturnal, but it's actually really pretty. It's what I have on my eyes today in the crease. And then this is just far more orange than anything else. So as I had predicted, the ABH is definitely more warm toned compared to some of these other things. And then I think I also want to have a look at this shimmer here, Adorn, which is this coppery shade. And we get a copper in here, maybe these two. Well, they're not quite the same. And I know this is not going to be the same, even though it looks similarly, because this is a multi-chrome, but... Um, maybe that can go there as well. Like there's not that many shimmer options in the ABH, but let's just go down the line like this. So there's the ABH. So there we have those shades. So the ABH is down here. These are the unearthly ones. This is from the Druid, these two. And then this is from the Nocturnal. And I'm not sure whether this is going to show up because I cannot really move my arm all that well. Uh, if it's like this, like if it's on my hand, then I can actually show you much better. Hold on. Let me just do that. So this is the Nocturnal Glaminatrix shade. And this looks like a bronze in the pan. But when you, like, move it, do you see that it's got this pink and green sort of quality to it? Then that way you can really see it. Like, if you can't move your hand, you can't get it to catch the light. But yeah, I think that the Adorn shade is very pretty, but this is probably what I would have wanted it to be. <laughs> um, this is a bit too reddish tone to be anything, like, compared. I think the closest we get is this shade from the Druid. So I think that the Druid has the most, like, straight-up dupes, <laughs> from what I can tell. Now, something that all of these palettes are lacking that the ABH has is this cool-toned, like, is it a plum? It's not really a plum, but that, like, cool-toned matte, the Mercury shade, that's actually my favorite shade in the entire palette. Like, this in the crease and just anything else with it, and you're good to go. And another thing it doesn't have is this, like, peachy coral and this like more yellow tone matte as well. 
This uh, cube shade is a white with a pink flash. Um, so we have that right here. So that's a duochrome that's very different to anything we've got going on in the rest of these palettes. Nothing like it. Uh, maybe this. Let me, let me swatch those side by side. But I think, yeah, the one from the Nocturnal has like a green and blue flip, not a pink one. So that's very different. It looks pink in the pan, so you go like, oh, maybe that can work, but then it doesn't. And then I think, again, just disregard, disregarding the ABH palette for a minute, we get these like purpley shimmers in, in these two palettes. Could that still be a thing? And I think this and this warrants comparing too, so. Let me swatch those out for you. And then I think we've seen every single shade in these palettes compared pretty much that I can compare. So here's the, uh, the Unearthly, that's the Nocturnal, the Druid, and the Nocturnal. So the Nocturnal definitely has a truer purple in there, but it's a multi-chrome, so oh, there we get it. Do you see? So the Nocturnal definitely has some more interesting shimmers, as does the Druid palette. These are more straight-up shimmers, these as well. Um, these have duochromes and multichromes in. So is the ABH subculture still as unique as I think it is? I think it's still unique. It's still a unique palette because it does have those warmer undertones, but we saw that there are some good dupes in these other palettes, I think that you could buy any of these, maybe with like safe for the It's Freaking Bats, because it doesn't have any of the warmth and the murkiness. Um, this is definitely brighter, I feel, than anything else we've got going on. But I've definitely now found some shades that I think, especially this shimmer can work with that really nicely. Uh, maybe some of these tones can work in this palette because I feel I don't have anything to really bridge the gap between this purple and these other purple shimmers it has. So I think, I think I now see options of what I can do to combine these. So that's another reason why I wanna do these videos. So yeah, thank you so very much for watching today. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. Leave suggestions in the comments if you wanna see me do any comparisons with some other palettes you wanna see me do. I currently have enough ideas to keep this series going, I think until April, because I only do these once a month. Um, so yeah, um, stay tuned for more, I should say. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date from to when I post new videos and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye